From Hollywood, it's time now for John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. This is Grover, American Consulate. Oh, hi. I'm back in my office. Do you know why? Why? Because Superintendent Clyde of the Hong Kong Police telephoned me. He's very upset over your attitude, asked me to speak with you. I told him I did speak to you earlier tonight and warned you to be cautious. I've been cautious, Mr. Grover. I just scalped a two-bit thug that William Meadow had on me. The next one on my list is Meadow himself. What do you think of that? Dollar, use your head. Look, Meadow's claim on his warehouse is no good. He hasn't liked me peeking around proving it's no good. Louisa Vedras was killed by him and one of his men because they thought it was me. And something's got to be done about it. Well, I agree, but will you come over and talk first? All right, Mr. Grover. But don't try to stop me. Tonight and every weekday night, John Lund in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Fifth day in Hong Kong. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Corinthian Liability and Risk, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of additional expenditures during my investigation of the Trans-Pacific matter. Expense account item 14. $48 American. Rental on 35 Packard. I got tired of rickshaws. But I had a hard time driving through the Hong Kong streets. Anybody would. They were still jammed with humanity. Humanity on the verge of panic. Humanity living on the edge of a war. Only thing I could say for that Packard was that the horn worked beautifully. And hardly anybody paid any attention to it. Took me an hour to get to Grover's office. He gave me a drink and listened to my story. Are you sure this man who's been following you is in the employ of uh, William Meadow? Positive, he told me. Yeah, but under uh, duress. He had a knife and a gun on him. Sure, I'd arrest him. I'd duress anybody with that kind of equipment, Mr. Grover. Wouldn't you? Uh, Calm down, calm down. You got a point, boy. Here, have another. Thanks. Well, what about Meadow? You say you're going after him. What do you mean? Just that. I'm going to get him. Yeah, you said that. But let me ask you something else. Is it for your insurance company or because of Louisa's death? This is for my own information, Dollar. Louisa and I got to know each other pretty well during the first three days I was here. I don't quite know how it happened. This has been a bad job for the nerves with my mind on what happened to the man in Shanghai and all. Mm -hmm. She got me the room at her father's hotel. She was there when I came back after a pretty bad day. I didn't know who was following me. And I guess I needed somebody to be with. So she stayed for a while. And she was there the next night, waiting for me in the room. And she was waiting for me to come back the night she was killed. That answers me. Don't you see? They killed her thinking it was me. You're sure of that? Of course. As sure as if I'd had a camera on the whole thing. But I can't move these police here. I can't get them to do anything. Yeah, you don't understand these people here. They have to be caught. Well, I don't. Not anymore. Look, I can't come into her life for two days and be responsible for her death and then not do anything about it. So you're going after Meadow? That's right. Well, I promised I wouldn't try to stop you. Yeah, thanks. But be careful. I'm glad he didn't say cautious. I had a big hate on for the word when I crawled back into the rented Packard and headed toward the south part of town where Meadow lived. Open up. Somebody open up or I'll shoot this lock off. Oh, who is it? It's Mr. Dollar. I've been here before. Open the door. Let me in. Hurry up. Oh, you wait. 
Oh, hello, Mr. Della. Uh, Mr. Meadow, he not here. You come back next week. Oh, no, please, please, you wait. Uh, Mr. Meadow, he not here, I tell you. Close the door. Oh, Mr. Meadow, he not here. Meadow! Meadow! He not here. You come back. Uh. Where is he? Oh, he say he come back next week. Uh, you come back then. Uh, he see you then. Now you go home. Look, I've got to find him. If you know where he is, tell me. Oh, he come back next week. Now, listen. I don't want to hurt you. You understand? Oh, do not hurt. But I will hurt plenty if I don't find out where he is. It's important. Now tell me, where is he? Oh, he say not to tell anybody. Tell me. Oh, Mr. Meadow, he fire me if I tell. Tell me. Oh, all right. Oh, he go Kowloon. Kowloon, eh? Oh, yes, uh, Kowloon. Uh, you find him there. Then you go with me. If he's not there, then I hurt. Oh, oh, oh. Now, once more. Oh. Once more, I have to find him. Where is he? All right, I, I tell you, uh, Repulse Bay. What? Repulse Bay. Repulse Bay? On the other side of the island, where the big hotel is? Oh, yes, uh, he there. Can I call him there on the telephone? Yes, you call. Is he at the hotel? Oh, no, no, he has a cottage, uh, number seven, uh, last one. Where's the telephone? Oh, oh please, uh, you will not tell how you learn he there, please. No. Oh, telephone... Call the number. Oh, I no talk. I'll talk. Go ahead. Repulse Bay Hotel? Oh, oh, oh Mr. Meadow Cottage, please. Okay, give it to me. Oh, you see, I tell truth, uh, he there. You did fine. Uh, you, you go see? Yeah. Uh, you no tell. No, I won't tell. But it won't make any difference anymore. Uh, I don't understand, Mr. Dollar. You will. Hong Kong Police Department. I want to talk to the superintendent. Yes, sir. Hold on. Superintendent Clyde here. Yeah? Will you believe a confession from William Meadow? Oh, who is this? Mr. Dollar? Yeah. What is this about a confession? Meadow's going to make one. Oh, now, see here. He's at Repulse Bay, Cottage 7. I'm going there now. If you want that confession, have some men there. Outside in an hour. And quiet till it's finished. I warn you, Dollar. Any illegalities on your part will be answered for. Oh, you go now, Mr. Dollar, huh? Yeah. I go now. <laughs> Packard got me there in 40 minutes, and I was in front of Cottage 7 when the police car slid in with lights and motors turned off. Dollar? Yeah. Let's get away from the house. Oh, Hello, Dollar. We came here not because of what you said on the phone about getting a confession, but to see to it that nothing happens here that would better be prevented. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Wait. Now, I have no reason to arrest you right now, but I will, and I mean it, if you do anything out of line. Well, then keep an eye on me. You're a hot-headed, impetuous man. My department and I have stood for all of the insults and badgering we will from you. I thought Mr. Grover made that clear to you. Mr. Grover told me you had to be cautious. And we do. Your case against William Meadow is nothing but notarized statements from people who could have said most anything. Well, your accusations as regards the murder of that poor girl bear consideration, but... They also are very inconclusive. But you haven't done anything about either. We do things our way, Mr. Dollar, in spite of your insurance company. There is no case against him. And why did he have me followed? Oh, did he? Some pug who was waiting for a chance at me. I shook him down two hours ago and found out Meadow hired him. Oh, that doesn't seem reasonable, Dollar. In light of what you said previously, if Meadow assumed you were the one shot behind the screen in your hotel room instead of the girl. No, it doesn't, except he found out the wrong person was killed. Doesn't any of this mean anything to you people? Well, we'd have to interview the man you were shook down. Where is he? In an alley on Sing Wong, for all I know. I left him cold. Well, Dal, I'll make your play. What? We'll back you up. Go ahead. All of us seem to be flying blind. This might flush out some truth. I don't understand. I checked on you as investigator quite thoroughly. You have a reputation in your United States, an enviable one. I can't disregard that. Very well. You wait here and do what you can. 
You put up a lot of fights, Superintendent. So do you. Good luck. Who is it? It's Dollar. Who? Dollar. You know I'm still alive. You know that girl was shot instead of me at the hotel room? I don't know anything. Meadow, I want you to go back to town with me and make a statement to the police. Are you crazy? Oh, no, I'm not crazy. I'm here to clear up two things, her murder and that fire. And you know I'm going to do it. Do I? I stopped that man you had following me. His statement will put you in plenty of hot water. Go away. I said I wanted you to come with me. I heard you. Will you come down or shall I come in? Come on in. We'll talk about it. It'll be a pleasure. Meadow? Meadow? No, you wouldn't take me down. <laughs> I hated you when you... Ah. What? I, I, I hit you, didn't I? Oh, just in the arm. It'll be all right. Should have been your stomach. You're cashing in, Meadow. How about it? A statement. No. Tell it, Meadow, how you fired the warehouse. And about the girl. It can't hurt you now. I'll tell you nothing. Dollar, you all right? Yeah. Meadow. Meadow. I should have got you it. <coughs> all right, Dollar. You better have that arm taken care of. Expense account item 15, $43 even, medical fees and hospital charges. I don't suppose it could be called hewing to the niceties of jurisprudence, since Meadow was dead and he refused before dying to speak or write his confession. But there were two police carloads of expert witnesses who took the fact that he had opened fire as an acceptable admission of guilt for the crimes accused. The same thing cleared me legally on the grounds of self-defense. I'd hoped it would clear my mind, but it hasn't. Louisa Vedras is still there. I guess she always will be. Nothing good came out of this assignment except saving your company some money it didn't know it had. Item 16, same as item 1, plane fare back to the United States. Expense account total, $4,515. End of fifth day. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. John Lund can currently be seen in the Universal International picture just across the street. Featured in our cast were Joe Kearns, Lillian Baeff, Robert Griffin, and Bill Johnstone. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> This is Dan Coverley, inviting you to join us next Monday when John Lund appears as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And remember, you meet adventure when you meet Johnny Dollar on the CBS Radio Network.